I again forgot something, forgot to mention something in the last video, and that something was simply that in this case where CO, IO, XO increase and that causes uh, aggregate expenditure to increase, I forgot to mention that government spending or GEO, government spending, this is not affected by fall in price. So I just want you to know that this government spending is not affected it's not affected by fall in price and that's the last thing I want to mention with uh, with respect to this video but for today's video what we're gonna go through is we're gonna go through what we did in the last video a little bit more and what I forgot to mention again in the last video about volatility is that remember I said an economy with a high Z tends to be more volatile well with a high Z this simply means that there is a high simple multiplier so when we do calculations and come up with a high simple multiplier that will make our or that will indicate our economy being a little bit more volatile or more volatile than it really should be and a small note is that the willingness the willingness to import to import or tax may reduce Z may reduce Z so in essence if we tax a lot or T is big enough or M is big enough such that when we calculate it we get a lower Z then that will make uh, that will make Z smaller and it will make the economy more stable than if we had a low T and a low M or a low low willingness to import and a low or a low willingness to tax now the new stuff in this video would be changes in aggregate demand and let me just write down the title so changes changes in aggregate demand so in essence changes in aggregate demand pretty much what I want you to know for this is if our aggregate expenditure or Z increases but it increases not due to price changes increases but not due to price changes to price changes then AD then our aggregate demand moves right moves right and this is similar to something I taught in my microeconomics videos that when uh, when some other factor other than price uh, changes then that would affect the demand and in essence it'll pretty much shift the demand curve depending on how the factors changed so let's draw a graph so let's have this arbitrary point here be y1 and the, our horizontal line is our income and our vertical is our price and let's have this purple curve be our first aggregate uh, aggregate demand curve and let's say that a E or Z did increase then but not due to price changes due to some other factor like it's like perhaps maybe the people are ex or like perhaps maybe a substitute uh, maybe a substitute uh, became more cheaper than the or the, a substitute became more expensive than people are buying this good and the aggregate demand um, 
the aggregate demand will change or shift right, then uh, then this happens. Or aggregate demand shift right. So so aggregate expenditure or or our spending increases not due to price changes. So aggregate demand moves right. And this would be our new aggregate demand curve. And this will be our new income or yeah, new income for a while. But I want you to notice something here. Notice that these the the price didn't really change. And that is something I told you way back that is important. In the immediate uh in the immediate time period the prices didn't change. That is because it always takes a little time for the prices to reflect uh to reflect the change in uh, the aggregate demand. But over the short run, what will probably happen is that the price will begin to be reflected in the uh, the price for the for the economy will begin to reflect what actually happened in the economy that the that the aggregate demand moved right. So then, in the short run, the price will probably move up. So it'll go from there to here. And I'll talk probably talk more about this in some subsequent videos but that's all I want you to know for this video and yeah I hope you learned something